Good morning, and welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter, that Sunday we fondly know as Good Shepherd Sunday. And I certainly hope we'll give you plenty of images through word and song of shepherds and Jesus the Good Shepherd. We have some exciting things that are coming up. Next Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter, and May 10th, is Mother's Day. And our children and our youth group are going to be doing something very special for the service, so I do hope you will tune into that. The next Sunday, 6 Easter, which is May 17th, I'm pleased to announce that we will have Bishop Diane Bruce as our guest, and she will be doing the greeting and giving us the sermon. The next Sunday, Easter 7, May 24th, is also Memorial Day. So I invite you to send in pictures of those who served in the military, particularly those that may have lost their lives, because that's what Memorial Day is all about. And in between 6 Sunday and 7 Sunday, we have a Thursday. Thursday, May 21st, that is Ascension Day. We rarely celebrate it as an entire church, but I've often done it after choir rehearsal. So this year, we will also have evening prayer on Thursday, May 24th. And so now, I invite you to begin our service for this is the fourth Sunday by singing hymn number 343, Shepherd of Souls, Refresh and Bless. our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning for the invitatory, I invite you to say with me the Jubilate. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, as you might expect, the psalm appointed for Good Shepherd Sunday is Psalm 23. Please join me in saying this together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate the food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying together Canticle number 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our Father. You are worthy of praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depth in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome again to Good Shepherd Sunday. It's always a favorite Sunday. And it reminded me of a story I read about a child in the 23rd Psalm. It reminded me of my life as an elementary school child growing up in Long Beach, California. My brother and I went to Mark Twain Elementary School, and we lived in what was called Lakewood Village within the city of Long Beach. And it was a little chunk that was cut out of the city of Lakewood that belonged to Long Beach. It was a nice residential area. And in my area, there were about six blocks before we came to the elementary school. Every one of us walked every day. No one got rides. Oh, some of us might have ridden our bikes at times, but we walked and the neighborhood was full of kids walking to school in the morning and home from school in the afternoon. Well, there was a first grader by the name of Timmy and he was just itching to walk to school by himself. You see, for months, his mother had walked him. He was a big boy and he didn't want to be walked by his mother. Not that he didn't enjoy his mother. He very much enjoyed his mother, but he wanted to grow up and be that big boy. And he actually wouldn't be alone because everybody else was walking, except nobody was walking with their mother. He would walk with his friend, Lizzie. She lived right down the street and they were good friends and they were in the same class. But well, when he told his mother about the plan, she wasn't really sure about it. Yes, she wanted to honor his independence, but she was also fearful and she wanted to keep him safe. So she finally said, okay, you and Lizzie can walk to school and I won't walk with you. And then she turned around and went to her neighbor, Barbara, told her the situation and said, would you mind following Timmy and Lizzie for a couple of weeks as they're headed off to school? You see, the mothers had a pact that they would each watch out for one another's children. And Barbara said, sure. She had a toddler in hand. They got up early and she said, it'll be good exercise for us. So Timmy and Lizzie set out, headed for school. And shortly behind them was Barbara and her daughter. Well, this happened for several days. And finally, it was Lizzie who said to Timmy, do you see that lady and her kid following us? He said, oh yeah. Do you know who they are? Yeah, I know them. Well, who are they and why are they following us? He said, oh, that's just Shirley Goodness and her daughter, Marcy. Huh? Why would Shirley Goodness and Marcy follow us? And Timmy finally said, ah, it's my mom. She always worries about me. Every night when we say our prayers, we always end with the 23rd Psalm. And what does it say at the end? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So I guess you'll just have to get used to it. Yes, I guess we'll just have to get used to it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's probably no more memorized chapter of the Bible than Psalm 23. Certainly no more beloved and comforting. And Jesus in today's gospel, Jesus the Good Shepherd, becomes the full embodiment of the shepherd in Psalm 23. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, I know I think of all kinds of, of images. I think of green land, I think of rolling hills, beautiful streams running by, sheep, a shepherd. I also think of Jesus as that shepherd who leaves the 99 to go after the one who is lost. As a matter of fact, I have a carving of Jesus carrying a sheep on his shoulders, returning that sheep home. I picked it up in Jerusalem when they were selling a lot of olive, cartons, olive wood um, carvings. And that's certainly something that I enjoy. But I think as we look deeper, you're gonna find a far more potent demanding and radical good shepherd in Jesus, the risen Christ, our Lord and our Savior. 
or as Thomas confessed, my Lord and my God. Jesus, the good shepherd who calls each of us by name. As I'm sure all of you know, if you're reading the Gospel of John, you're going to see a lot of images, you're going to see metaphors, you're going to see word pictures, and not a lot of it is going to be straightforward speaking. In this case, he uses the imagery of the sheep and the shepherd. Now I must say, I don't go around seeing a lot of sheep and shepherds in this day and age. Probably the closest I come to it is knowing that Barney, who is right here beside me, is a Shetland sheepdog. And Shetland sheepdogs were bred off the Shetland Islands to herd sheep. And sometimes to give our Shetland sheepdogs a little bit of fun, we'll take them someplace where they can actually herd sheep or more often ducks. And that's about as close as it gets for me to sheep and shepherds. But for ancient Israel, sheep and shepherds were crucial. Most of Israel's early leaders were shepherds at one time or another. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David. Ancient society often deemed shepherds as dirty and unreliable and sometimes even despised workers. But those were the ones that, that God chose. I think of that glorious night when all the angels were singing glory to God in the highest and announcing the birth of Jesus, announcing the gift of salvation to all people. That gift was first given to shepherds. Well, when we think about shepherds as rulers of people, the shepherds are supposed to be an imitation of those true shepherds. You see, shepherds knew all the sheep. They knew each one by name. They cared for each one. It was their job to tend them. It was their job to go and search for them if they got injured. A sheep that falls on its back like this is as good as dead unless found. And in the evening, when the sheep would come into the pen, it was up to the shepherd to examine each one, to treat its wounds, to give them oil, to fend off those pesky flies. And you see, all of the sheep all went into one pen. And the shepherd knew the sheep, no matter what, and they knew his voice. When it was finally time to bed down, one of the shepherds would lie down across the opening and effectively would be the gate, there to protect. Well, now these shepherds of people failed miserably. The prophet Ezekiel absolutely excoriates them for their poor treatment of the people, feeding themselves and, and not their people, caring for themselves, enriching them, and not caring one bit for the people, not strengthening them, not caring for the weak, not going back and getting the strayed and the lost, ruling harshly and scattering the sheep, making them prey for wild animals. The truth of the matter is that only God could be the true shepherd who would care perfectly for his sheep, bringing them into good land, searching out the lost, healing wounds, feeding them from good pasture, the same God who would judge between the sheep and the goats. And everyone knew that. Everyone knew that only God was a true shepherd. Even the Pharisees. And here was Jesus confronting the Pharisees once more. You see, this story of Jesus the Good Shepherd didn't just come out of nowhere. It is preceded by the story of Jesus healing the man who had been born blind. It's a wonderful story. There was a man who had been born blind and he spent his entire life as a child, even as an adult, sitting beside the gates, begging for alms, begging for food, and that was his life. And one day, Jesus came into town, and he healed the man. He was so excited that he jumped around praising God, and they went to tell everybody, and no one believed him. No one. They saw this same man, whom they knew was sitting at the gate and blind, and they refused to believe him. Only God could heal a man born blind. And here was this man, Jesus, healing, and on the Sabbath day. And they never got it. Only God could heal. And there was Jesus. And finally, the Pharisees realized that Jesus was pointing a finger at them. And the Pharisees said to Jesus, Hey, you're not calling us blind, are you? 
And Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and abandoned. I am the gate is only slightly edited version of I am the way and the truth and the life. Whoever enters by me will be saved. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. That's what salvation is all about. Having life, having life abundantly. You notice Jesus doesn't say anything about sin, although there's plenty of sin, and we know that Jesus died for us. But he says, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. And anyone else who pretends to be in that role is a thief and abandoned. You might ask why he would say that. Well, only Jesus, the gate of salvation, the good shepherd, God, is willing to lay down his life for us that we might have eternal life. The others are thieves or bandits. They don't really care for you. They don't care for anybody. They care only for themselves. And when the sheep, when we're in danger, hey, they're going to run away. They're going to split. They're not going to care. Salvation is only in Jesus. And contemporary means we might say salvation is not to be found in a good philosophy, nor is it to be found in a job, or in money, or in success, or even in family. Salvation is not found in AA, in New Age, in self-help groups. Not that any of those are bad. As a matter of fact, some, like family, are, are wonderfully good. But they're not salvation. Salvation is found in Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Our risen Lord and Savior, who is radical in his commitment to us as a shepherd of Psalm 23. The one who offers us salvation is a shepherd who will be there to nurture and guide us, to seek us out when we're lost. The one who will be with us in the midst of trouble, in the midst of our enemies. The one offering salvation is the one who will be with us even in death, offering us eternal life. So that where I am, you may be also. He promised not to lose one of those whom had been given to him by God, but raise them up on the last day. Because Jesus has defeated death. Our Savior, the risen Christ, who makes that radical commitment to us as our Lord and Savior, calls each of us by name. Do you hear? Can you hear? Do you answer? I know a fair number of people who do not like the word Lord because they assume that it implies submission. And you know something, it does. But to be able to call him Lord, as with Thomas exclaimed, my Lord and my God implies a living, breathing relationship with Jesus that includes the sovereignty of God. It includes the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It includes our giving our lives to him. And it's the only way to true joy, to life, to meaning, and abundance. When Jesus who calls us, asking us to obey, when he calls us, It'll be in the midst of all kinds of other voices, all kinds of other callings, some good, some bad. Maybe our own voices, the voices of consumerism, the voices of demand, the voices of despair, the voices of relativism. The one calling us is the only one who can offer us life. Jesus, the good shepherd, is the one who calls you by name. The name given to you at birth, the name proclaimed at baptism, the name that only you have, so that you may hear him call you as Mary heard in that garden that day. And Jesus will lead us if we'll let him. He'll care for us. He holds us in the palm of his hand. Something that Father Jim says over and over again that Jesus holds us in the palm of his hand and will never let us go. Can you hear the good shepherd calling you by name? calls passionately, urgently, lovingly. He calls you because he loves you. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Please join me now in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is a good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Your responses are in bold. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Good Shepherd, within your embrace you are, we are safe and secure. Within your embrace we know that we are precious in your sight. Within your embrace we feel the warmth of family and belonging. Within your embrace, we grow and are nurtured together as one flock, the people of your pasture, under your loving care and protection. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our Maker. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we find comfort and healing. We bring to you those who are weak or struggling with physical, mental, or spiritual health. You are the great healer, and we pray for healing of mind and body for those on our parish prayer list and those we now name either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Come, let us bow down before, before the Lord, Lord our, our Maker. Maker. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we find justice. We bring to you the brave voices who cry out for freedom, those prepared to stand up and be heard without counting the cost. We pray for those who have been imprisoned or tortured for their race, color, or faith, for all Christians who have taken up the cross and know its weight and pain. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our Maker. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we find love and joy. We bring before you and ask your blessing upon those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Watch, Watch over, over your children, children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. 
and in their hearts may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we find peace. We bring to you those orphaned, crippled, or dispossessed by war. For refugees wandering this earth in search of a home, for all victims of strife and welfare, and for all those who have dedicated their lives for the search of peace and reconciliation. Come, let us bow down before, before the Lord, Lord our Maker. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Please join me now in saying the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now together let us say the prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 708, Shepherd Like a Savior Lead Us. again from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant equip you with everything good that you may do his will working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen go in peace to love and serve the Lord alleluia 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 thanks be to God alleluia 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 Goodbye for now. May God's peace be with you, and I'll see you online.